Hello and welcome to another episode of James Explains. Today we're going to be talking about needle roller bearings, what they are, what makes a needle roller bearing, the different types, the positives, negatives, considerations and some of the applications that we find them within. So firstly, what makes up a needle roller bearing? Well, it's all to do with the rolling element, the bit that goes round and reduces the friction. So here we've got some rolling elements. These are needle rollers. What makes it a needle roller? Well, if you look at the length and the diameter, if the length is between three to 10 times as big as the diameter, that's a needle roller. It means that there is a line contact when the rolling element is moving within the bearing. So if we talk about the different types of needle roller, this example that I've got in my hand is a cage guided needle roller bearing. It has a drawn cup outer, it has a cage that guides the needles, and the rolling elements themselves are what actually reduce the friction with the rotating shaft. We can have axial types, we can have this cage guided type, we can have a split cage type, we can have a needle roller without any outer, we can even have this large type here, which has a steel cage and a machined cut outer. They're called cage guided needle roller bearings because there is a metal or sometimes a plastic cage that guides each of the rolling elements so that they don't skew and misalign, meaning that they can run at much higher speeds. For this type of needle roller bearing, you can see that there is no outer raceway for it to run on and it would actually require you to machine the housing and the shaft that it needs to run on to the required raceway specification. We can provide that information for you. If you need information on how to create the right raceway and quality, please leave a comment below or contact us directly and we can help you with your application. This split cage needle roller bearing can be found commonly in gearboxes. The reason why it's normally used is that it can be easily opened up, placed over a feature, and then placed into the right section of the shaft and the gearbox. It differs from uh, this steel cage option that I showed you earlier on in that it has a plastic cage and also it has the split to be easily assembled. The steel cage is great for use in uh, supporting the shaft itself. Often it's difficult however to assemble a needle roller if the shaft has different steps or um, features machined into it where the split cage version can be a real benefit. Some of the positives of needle roller bearings are that they allow for high speed compensation. Given their size, they have relatively high load carrying capacity and they have relatively low mass. Some of the negatives, however, is that they only compensate for support in one direction. So this option that I'm showing you here could support a radial load that has no axial compensation. The other issue that you have with needle roller bearings is that if you do get an edge load on the bearing itself, you can create high stresses. If we take a close look at this using this needle roller, if I'm holding that needle roller like so, and I get a high edge load, then what the needle roller is gonna do is skew, which is gonna create high stress at the end of that needle roller. It's designed to have the full line contact to support the load across the length of the roller. Once you start getting misalignment, you're gonna start getting high edge load pressures. They don't have great compensation for misalignment. The last type that we're gonna give you a brief overview on is the axial or thrust cage guided needle roller bearing. If we look at it on a close up, you can see that the needles themselves are orientated 390 degrees and this means that they can support loads axially at the end of the shaft. This is important because often within a gearbox for example there will be some axial loads generated and normally by the teeth geometry on the gears and this will need to be compensated for. Some of the main applications for needle roller bearings are within gearboxes both manual and automatic often for main shaft or gear idler bearings things like crank and piston pin, as well as various other applications. If you've got any questions on sourcing a specific bearing for your application or on designing a new system, please get in contact with us and we'll try and help you in any way that we can with your application. And that's it for today's episode. Please hit like if you enjoyed the video. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, turn on your notifications and watch out for our next videos.